Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, you got your start in the business acting, right? Yeah, I was act an actor uh, in the beginning of my career. Uh, what made you uh, switch over to the behind the camera? Well, you know, I was on a TV show called The White Shadow, uh -huh. and there were a lot of guys on the show, and so it was exciting to be on the show. But every week there m there might be a different guy who had the lead story, so I found myself sort of sitting around a lot, and I was always curious about making movies. I mean, certainly once I was on the set, sort of what everybody did and how it worked and how you put it together. So I started coming in on my days off and talking to people, and I was lucky. I was with a young company, and I got a chance to direct on that show in the second season. Cool. And did, did you uh, shoot the pilot for Miami Vice? And, and I shot the pilot for Miami Vice, which was you know a couple of years later. Uh -huh. um, but that was a real obviously a very innovative show and a, and, a, and a great moment in my career because I got a chance to take a lot of the things that I had enjoyed in films and bring them to television. Um, use of, of a light and color and sound and of course the use of music mm -hmm. uh, that I tried to use in a very different way than it had been used in, in, in television before and um, and that show was, you know, obviously a real hallmark. Um, what got you excited for this particular football story? I was excited by this movie just because the story itself is so inspirational. I mean, yeah. it's just a great story. Of course, first you hear that they won 151 games straight, some mm -hmm. high school team. You know, how could that be? And you're asking yourself, well, what's the story? I mean, what, you know, how do we tell a story about a team that always wins? Of course, we found a way to tell a story about a team uh, at a certain moment in that streak where things don't go so well you know, where that streak is in jeopardy, where they uh, suffer a great loss of one of their players, where they, the coach has a heart attack and they have to deal with that. And of course, after winning so much, the team feels a lot of pressure to keep winning. And at the same time, they feel a sense of entitlement, like, you know, the guys maybe aren't as committed. So those things were interesting to me to try to find a way to, to tell a story that would be exciting for an audience. Um, the. Uh actual football scenes of them playing were quite spectacular. Can you walk me through a day of how you shot, you know? Well, we, we, we had a couple of units shooting um, that. I did storyboards for the shots in those games with my cinematographer, Michael Lohman. We then gave those storyboards to Alan Graff, who was the second unit director, and we had put together about 47 players that we'd taken from Louisiana and Texas and the Midwest and brought in some guys from California, you know, college players who weren't playing anymore, who hadn't made it to the pros or, people who are really talented to, to be our, our, our base team. Um, and they shot a lot of uh, sequences uh, in second unit. We then came in with the first unit, brought the actors in, married them into the plays as well, and picked up some of that stuff and shot it, shot it again. And we um, used some, un, some different kinds of techniques to shoot the football, we used a motorcycle camera uh, cool. that, that people hadn't really used that much before in, in narrative film. And uh -huh. it gave the, a kind of dynamism yeah. to the football. I think it gives a sense of action and movement to yeah. it that's exciting. It was really cool. Um, I saw that you worked with Eddie Murphy at one point. I did work on with Metro, Eddie. right? Yeah, yeah. Give me a really funny story from working with Eddie Murphy. You no, know, I'll tell you this about that movie. Uh, I did a movie <laughs> called uh, Metro with Eddie. Um, one of the mistakes I think I've made in my career is that I made this movie and it was an R-rated movie and I should have made like a PG-13 movie. <laughs> it would have made a lot more money. So we gave Eddie free reign and so Eddie would come in and he was very funny but it was every other word was, you know, some profane word <laughs> and I'm trying to, and I'm laughing but at the same time I'm going, okay, are we going a little too far here and maybe we should tone it down. Um, but yeah, he was a, he was a great guy. You know, he's a really good guy, uh, very nice and very down to earth to work with. Last question: Since you're obviously really into movies, you've always loved them. What are some of your favorite scenes from movies that have always stuck with you growing up? Growing up. Wow, you know, I mean, I think um, a, n a number of scenes in the in the Godfather one and two. There are just any number of scenes that are great. The scene at the end of the first Godfather is fantastic. The scene where they kill Tessio or no I think they're killing uh, the the uh, the son-in-law and they they have him in a car and yes. the cameras on the on the hood and that's great the opening of jaws is is probably the first time I really identified wow this movie is really well directed I wasn't even sure I knew what that really meant at that point but I yeah. knew I was in the hands of a real filmmaker of uh -huh. somebody who was able to create mood and tone and texture and 
a kind of emotional dynamism that you know I, I hadn't felt so viscerally before. So, you know, love those things. All right. Well, thanks so much. Thanks yeah. so much for talking. Yeah.